Good day to you. Uh, this is the old Kristen Cowboy bringing to you the ABCs that some um, Christians struggle with. I am surprised of the attention that we have been receiving. I was in the grocery store today and uh, just standing in line and two or three people came up to me and said, you that cowboy be talking about the Bible. I said, yeah, that's me. And it made me feel real good to know that people are getting the word out, sharing this information with um, other people. Uh, I want to say from the onset, I don't think I'm better than nobody else. Uh, not no more holier than you. Same thing it takes for you to get in. It takes it for me to get in. But I was inspired to do a series on the ABCs that some Christians struggle with. And so uh, today we're going to be looking at F. And the word for today is forgiveness. The freedom to forgive. That's Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. You ought to read that. And to save time, I won't read all of the scriptures. I would give them to you. And you have a homework assignment to read them for yourself. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. And our topic is the freedom to forgive. Forgiveness frees us. Whether you know it or not, we are put in the family of God once we are born again. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you repent of your sin, when you are baptized into the family of God, you are in his family. And he took his grace to forgive you and accept you. And because he forgave you, that forgiveness does not stop. Just like God forgave you, you have an obligation to forgive one another. This is a hard subject for us to talk about. Uh, forgiveness, because Jesus forgave us and allowed us to come into the family. We're in the family now because of what Christ did on the cross. Watch it now. Because forgiveness puts us into the family. Unforgiveness destroys the family fellowship. Um, the word forgiveness is connected to debt because when you forgive somebody, a debt is paid. As an example, if you owe me $100 and you don't pay me, and Bible says the wicked borrowed and paid not again. So I don't know how you can say you are a Christian if you owe everybody. If you owe people, you should pay them. Amen. But there are some people, you know them, I have friends, so-called friends, and you have some in your family who have borrowed stuff from you and you have not seen them anymore. And sometimes when you do see them, they act like they have forgotten. But that's another subject. Forgiveness means debt. And if you borrow $100 from me and don't pay me and I see you, if I hold a grudge, that means I still hold it against you. But if I say to you, don't worry about it, uh, I forgive you. That releases me and it also releases you. Unforgiveness destroys the family fellowship. Uh, you have to pass it on after you're born again. Um, guilt imprisons us. Bitterness is the poison within us. Guilt and bitterness is what people feel, the emotions that we feel when we fail to forgive people. Guilt and bitterness. But when we forgive them, we set two prisoners free. You set the one who have done you wrong, you set them free. But you also free yourself. I want to talk about the compelling reasons for forgiveness. Why should we forgive? I want to look at the grace factor, the guilt factor, the grief factor, 
and the gain factor. Number one, the grace factor. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. It says, God has forgiven us. Now, if God can forgive us with all the stuff we've done, now don't sit there like you ain't never done nothing. When you sin, when you do wrong, you transgress against God. And yet this morning, he did not fail to wake you up. The reason why I know you woke up, because you're looking at me right now. Out of all the stuff, now you think about this. How old are you? Are you in your 40s? Are you in your 50s? You in your 70s? You in your 80s? Think about all the stuff you've done all these years. And yet every day, God shows you grace no matter what you have done. And if God could show you grace for all what you have done these last 40, 60, 70 years, if God could show grace to you, you ought to be able to show grace to somebody else. The guilt factor. The guilt factor is found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. It suggests that forgiveness is a bridge over which we must travel. He says very plainly, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debts. That's a bridge I have to cross. As we forgive our debtors, that's a bridge that we allow them to cross. But when we refuse to forgive people, we tear down that bridge. And what you're telling God, God treat me the same way I have treated somebody else. You can't have the attitude, I forgive, but I'm just not going to forget it. What if God did you like that? Hmm. So the guilt factor. Uh, go to James chapter 2 verse 13. This is real good here. James chapter 2 verse 13. It says, if you do not forgive people, you will experience judgment without mercy. Judgment without mercy. If you can't show people mercy, why would you expect God to show you mercy? If you don't have enough grace to forgive somebody who did you wrong one time or two times, and yet for 50 years, 60 years, 80 years you've been doing God wrong, and he keeps showing you mercy over and over and over and over again. Why you can't show mercy to your brother, your sister, your parent, a grandchild, a stepchild, a spouse, a church member, somebody at the, at the job. If you can, if God could show you mercy, you ought to be able to show mercy to them. Mercy is something that we need day by day. But then the grace factor, guilt factor, the grief factor. Go to uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews 12, 15. It says, when you do not forgive, you have a troubled spirit. When you do not forgive people, you trouble them, but also it troubles you. People see you and they think you got it going on. You never can truly have joy and peace as long as you holding on to stuff as long as you still talking about i can't stand her i can't stand him i can't do her i can't do him they make me sick Ooh, they just get up under my skin when you say things like that your spirit is troubled and that means you telling me when you go to church you can't even enjoy and feel the holy spirit because when they walk in the door, there your spirit is troubled because automatically the devil make you go back and you start reminiscing about something that happened five years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Aren't you bigger than that? But then the gain factor, the gain factor, go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 24, Matthew chapter 5 verse 24. He says, listen, this is so serious about forgiveness. He says that if you have ought against your brother, God don't even want you to bring an offering. He says, leave the offering. Leave it at the table. And go to that brother or that sister. And you need to ask their forgiveness. Or you need to go to them and tell them, hey, I forgive you. 
Let's get this straight. And then it says, go back and get your offering and then bring it to the Lord. Hmm. Peter asked the question, how many times should I forgive my brother? He thought he was saying so when he said seven times. And Jesus said, no, I say unto you, 70 times seven. If you can forgive 490 times, that means there's no limit on, on forgiveness. How many times have God forgiven me? Repeat that after me. Would you do that, please? How many times? Come on, talk. Come on. Come on, talk to the old cowboy. Come on. How many times have God forgiven me? Sister, ask that question. Brother, ask that question. Deacon, preacher, musician, trustee member, good Christian, ask that question. How many times have God forgiven me? Matter of fact, make it personal. Put your name there. And, and this, these are some questions I want, to, want you to know that you ought to ask yourself. And this is something you ought to tell yourself. When you refuse to forgive people, especially when you're in the body of Christ, when you say you're born again, you're God's daughter, you're God's son, when you, forget, when you do not forgive people, I want you to put your name there and repeat after me. When I, put your name there, when I, Gloria, when I, Martha, when I, Mary, when I, Bobby, when I, uh, Michael, when I, Johnny, when I refuse to forgive, uh, four things happen. I disgrace the Savior. I discourage the saints. I drive away sinners. And I delight the devil. When I do not forgive people, when I, R.L., do not forgive people, I disgrace my Savior. I'm supposed to be his representative. I'm supposed to be his ambassador. I'm supposed to be his instrument. I'm supposed to be trying to tell other folk that God can forgive them. How can I tell people God will forgive you and I do not forgive people? And how can you tell people God can forgive granddaughter, he can forgive you, grandson, he can forgive you, children, stepchildren, niece, nephew, sinners, God can forgive y'all, and yet you walking around with some in your heart against your brother or sister. Is it not in the Bible it says, how can you say you love, love God and you never seen him, and yet hate your brother, and you see him or her every Sunday, every day? And you mean to say, as old as you are, as sick as you have been, as much as God has blessed you, you mean to say you're going to continue to walk around with all that stuff in your heart. When you fail to forgive people, you disgrace the Savior, but also you discourage the saints. Because a lot of times when folk get mad at folk, they don't want to be mad by themselves. They try to get their children to fall out with them. They want their grandchildren not to speak to them. Yeah, that's why you have cliques in the church. When I get mad at somebody, I want everybody in my little group to be mad at them too. And when you get mad at people, you want everybody in your little circle to be mad at them too. God is not getting glory in that. Come on, somebody. You discourage the saints. Because Jesus said the world would know that you are mine because you love one another. He also said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So now you saying you love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? You singing in the choir. That's what you saying. You praying. You reading that Bible. You talking about you born again and got the Holy Ghost. You supposed to keep his commandments. And when we refuse to forgive, we discourage the saints. But we also drive away sinners. We drive away sinners because people look at us and say, why should I go there? They know better than us. Matter of fact, people in the world, they got something they say, we squash that. Man, we put that behind us. We have moved on. We shook it off. Oh, we done with that. This is a new start. Sometimes the people in the world can forgive each other quicker than the folk in the church. 
I should have got a good amen right there. I give you another chance. Sometimes the people in the street, the ones you call hoodlums and thugs, they can forgive each other. And yet these goody goody church folk, they'll get mad and got ner and they have the humiliated gall to jump up and leave church and they'd rather go somewhere else, not knowing if you can't get it right at this church, wherever you go, you're gonna continue to have problems. Because the problem was not the people at that church. It's something, baby, on the inside of you. Mm. It's something on the inside of you. And because of your action, when you can't forgive people, you drive away sinners. And the only one who get glory, the only one who get delight is Satan. Lastly, when we do not forgive folk, we delight Satan. He's laughing. He's happy. He said, oh, yeah, she acting just like I want her to act. All of these lessons, the ABCs that some Christians struggle with, they are connected to each other. Because when you go back to bitterness, what did I tell you about bitterness? There's a root to bitterness and the fruit of bitterness. And the root is what you can't see, but the fruit is what the world see. And when they see you can't forgive people, when you walking around, you're a grandparent now. Got Ben Gay on, arthritis, rheumatism, as sick as you be. And you still around here hopping and dragging along and, and still talking about you still mad at somebody and been mad at them for years. For years. When are you going to let that stuff go? Man, old as you is, when are you going to let that go? The only one getting glory. Is Satan. And then I'm done now. Does it cost to forgive? Yes, it costs to forgive. Um, go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. The cost of forgiveness. How should I forgive? Write this down. We should forgive freely. We should forgive fully. We should forgive finally. And we should forgive forcefully. We should forgive freely. God chased Adam and Eve down when they messed up in the garden. God came looking for them and said, Adam, where are thou? I know you messed up, man. God knew where he was, but he wanted him to know. Where are you? What have you done, Adam? And maybe this word is pricking your heart, saying to you right now, what have I done? I've been stubborn and stiff-necked and mean. And you want to know why people don't want to be around you? Because of that spirit you have. You spoil it. Too old to be. If it can't be your way, it ain't going to be no way. You got to let that stuff go. You got to forgive freely. But then you got to forgive fully. Not apologize. Not make excuses. You see, it's a difference between forgiving and apologizing. When you apologize, you put an excuse with it. Well, you know, I wouldn't have done that if she hadn't have said that. I wouldn't have done that if he hadn't have did that. Don't forget about that. It doesn't matter about who did what and, and what they said and what they did. That happened how many years ago have it been? Forgiveness is fully. You must forgive fully. It doesn't matter about who was right or wrong. My great aunt who raised me taught me, I'm not responsible for what people do to me or how people treat me. I'm responsible for how I treat people. Forgive fully. And then forgive finally. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 25. Isaiah 42 verse 25. He will cast your sin in the sea of forgetfulness and he will not remember it no more. When God forgives you, he don't bring it up. He is done. When God forgive you, he done with it. And this is how you got to be. When you forgive people, you can't keep bringing it up. Don't, why are you still talking about it? When you forgive, finally, you say, I'm done with it. Matter of fact, if somebody bring it up, you say, hey, I don't even want to talk about that. I'm like Paul. I'm forgetting the things that are behind me. And I'm pressing on toward the mark of a higher calling. Forgive freely, forgive fully, forgive finally, 
but then forgive forcefully. Uh, Jesus has ordered us to forgive. And you got to do it forcefully. Sometimes you have to make yourself do it. Because self ain't going to want to do it. This is why for you to be a true disciple, he says you got to deny what? Yourself. And take up a cross. And follow me daily. If this message is a blessing to you, if you are the Christian that you profess to be, if you are the Christian, or if you are the woman of God that you say you are, if you are really trying to change with all these folk dying, 220,000 people have died from the COVID, and you are still here, you still can get it right. You ought to make up your mind tomorrow or as soon as you can. You might have to write them a note or write them an email. Just write them or call them and say, hey, we hadn't talked for a long time, and I just want you to know I love you. I ain't got nothing in my heart against you. I guarantee you, you'll sleep better. You'll sleep better that night. I'm done now. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. What is the result of forgiveness? Personal, um, when you forgive, that would be uh, personal emancipation, and then there would be reconciliation, and then there would be spiritual jubilation. Personal emancipation. That means you'll be free. Once you tell somebody, forgive me, if they don't forgive you, that's them. At least you can say, hey, I done my part. One of the best things in the world is being able to sleep at night without having no, nothing in your heart against nobody. I've been a pastor a long time. I've pastored uh, five churches, and I cannot even go on to tell you some of the things I have experienced and some of the things I've seen. I've had people get mad at me because I tried to preach and tell them right. I've had people lie on me. I've had people put me with people. I don't know if they're a man or a woman. I done had people try to tear me down. I've had people that I tried to help and they turn around and try to destroy me. And I, I would see them and I would even say, I'm done with him, I'm done with her. But because of what's in my heart, because I know God is writing it down, God has been too good to me for me to be holding grudges. And some of you all got way more than what I have. God been good to you. And as good as he been to you, girl, as good as he been to you, boy, as good as God been to you and your family, this is your opportunity for personal emancipation for you to free yourself and then reconciliation God can put you all back together and then finally spiritual jubilation uh, you don't want to just remove the roof but you want to tear down the wall don't try to get people back because Romans 12 and 19 said vengeance is mine said the Lord Vengeance belong to the Lord. And then also, you should have a spirit of forgiveness according to Luke 23 and 24. Luke 23 and 24. I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. Matter of fact, I usually try to talk about uh, anywhere from 10 to uh, 15 minutes and I went over time. I hope, I hope I'm not disturbing you, but somebody needed to hear this. Will you just let me just pray for you right quick? Lord, somebody been holding something in their heart for a long time. Somebody right now, when they see people, some well up inside of them, there's an anger, a rage that stirs up inside of them. And the devil and his demons, we know what the job of the demon is. To distract, to deceive, and to destroy. But we want to cancel that spirit right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying to God. I stretch forth my hand for my sister who's watching this video. Matter of fact, she's been tempted to turn it off, but she needed to hear this. For that brother, I pray for him right now. Whoever he been mad at. And sometimes it be your own family member who have done you wrong. 
But as good as God been to you, I want you to let it go in Jesus' name. I love you. If you will, share this video with seven people. And this is a video you don't need to watch one time. Watch it over and over and over again. And the next time you attempt it to backslide or have a struggle with forgiveness, uh, I hope you'll pull this up. I'm R.L. Moore, and I will see you on the other side. And the greatest gift you can give yourself is when you learn how to forgive people. I love you in the Lord. Be blessed.